Okay, hello, Rachel. How do you say your last name? Reinert. Reinert. Because <laughs> I thought it was Hart. Reinert. Reinert. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Hart's good too. Reinert. Rachel <laughs> Reinert. We're here with in her lovely house with her ukulele. <laughs> so I'm going to say a word and you say the first thing that comes to your mind. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sexy. Time. <laughs> <laughs> tattoos. Uh, eight. I've got eight of them. You have eight tattoos? Yeah. Little ones, discreet. Uh, I have one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I, I technically have seven because I had one removed. So Wait, I have which one did you have removed? on my forearm I, when I was 18. Uh, I was on the road uh, with Gloriana and I decided in Vegas to get a tattoo of a music note. And then it turned out horrible so oh later on I was like I'll just add wings to it and then it and got, got bigger it, it was horrible Wait, so where was it, removed? it was on my forearm so oh my gosh so they really did a great removal yeah so it works That's yeah it works yeah because I got my first one and Michael my husband wrote grateful in his handwriting so cute but originally when I first got it it was immediate regret like oh my god I've ruined my body like no. life is over no so I called my dermatologist <laughs> and I was like how do I get this thing off because I'm not going to. I love it now. But it you had a little instant process. regret. Yeah, yeah. So they numb you at the place that I went to. And, and the only thing is that it just takes a really long time because you have to wait like six weeks in between oh, wow. each process. So how long? I think I went through about 10 different treatments. So it took about a year to get it completely oh. off. Yeah. Dang, girl. <laughs> oh, you can't even tell. Thanks. Okay, so we have 7.5. Well, so yeah, and a ghost. yeah, yeah, and a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, crush. Ooh, Dave Grohl. I put him in here because I saw that you loved I him. I love Dave Grohl. Love I Dave do. Grohl. I do. What do you love about him? His hair. Uh, just his everything. Ways. He's so funny, and he's really smart, and he just is such a lover of music and the knowledge of music, and he spreads that, and I I just adore that, and it, just his energy, his aura, um, you know, the he's just a funny, cool guy, and he's such a well-rounded musician and a great songwriter, and I just admire everything about that. I totally agree. Yeah. I love Dave Grohl. He's awesome. Okay. Wine. Ooh. Uh, boxed, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a box girl? Uh, I, I, I am, like, when I'm home for some reason, you know, just because typically um, if I get a bottle of wine, I'll only drink, like, one or two glasses, and then it just goes bad because I'll forget about it or, you know, I'll, I'll leave town or whatever. So it's just easier for me to get that because I know I can keep it for a long time, mm -hmm. and you get, like, four bottles in one box, so you don't really have to keep running back to the store and doing all that. It's so the, it's, it's convenience. What's your favorite cocktail? <laughs> Ooh, um, actually, and there's, like, no sponsorship whatsoever, but you would think that there is because I talk about it all the time, but I love the Deep Eddies Ruby Red Grapefruit, grapefruit Vodka With? Club Soda. That's it. That's all you need. I think it's the oh best my thing gosh, ever. Because you don't have to have a mixer because it's sweet. Yeah, it's perfect. It's really, but it's not too sweet. So that's the good part about it. I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> you Jack have to. That cocktail. I'm telling you, you're gonna go through those bottles because they're like it is so good. Oh it's gosh. a good go-to. It's very refreshing too. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> disgusting Ooh, uh chewing with your mouth open I can't take it oh it's really bad that's true yeah I hate that it's yeah. smacking yeah just what about finger no. licking D just no just you want manners. none of it yes you need some <laughs> at the dining table yeah just <laughs> yes <laughs> eat politely yeah <laughs> okay uh dog I wish I had one I want one. one so bad. I do. I do. I have three. I'll give you one. Okay. Like, seriously, I just, <laughs> just drop it off. <laughs> I got an extra one. And you can have her. She's great. Potty train. Oh. Give me Lou. I, I, that'd be perfect. I, I seriously want one. I, and I've been thinking about it a lot. So I hopefully, maybe this year, I might I might do it. Come over and meet Emmy Lou. Okay. See what you think. Okay. Okay. Must. Ooh. A must. Oh gosh. What hairspray. <laughs> you love hair, you have great hair. Thank you. It doesn't even look like there's 
hairspray in it. That the hairspray that I use, I I love it because it's it gives me flexibility. But for some, I don't know. It's like a security blanket for me what because kind? I really like the bumble and bumble in a red can. It's amazing because it looks like you literally have no hairspray. I like, and I honestly, it's like every day I have to just even just like a little mist, <laughs> just to make myself feel complete. You know what I mean? Yes. If I don't have that, it's like I'm just not gonna get through the day and be all right. <laughs> Totally. I hear you. Well, it looks fabulous. Thank you. I was going to ask you Dave Grohl, but you've already said he's your crush. Yes. Okay. So I also saw you talk about this. Close talkers. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep a distance. Do people get up in your grill? Sometimes, yeah. You know, and I'll tolerate it. <laughs> but it just, like, it freaks me out because, you know, it's like you just, I don't know. It's like you just get kind of, you don't want to smell each other's space breath invaders. yeah <laughs> so how much space is cr is appropriate this is a great space right here so like you think like an arm's length away yeah from someone? yeah yeah give, give yourself an arm's length yeah away. arm's length is great i agree because <laughs> you don't just smell each other's breath no and catch the spit spray. yeah exactly and exactly so you enough. can still hear me totally. i can still hear you yes perfect <laughs> okay and music Ooh, um the first thing that comes to mind Vinyl. I mean, I, and I've got a huge collection over there. I've been mm -hmm. really lucky to inherit <laughs> my inherit? dad's. Yeah, it's my dad's. So. so your dad's a big music person. Yeah, yeah. And he and and my mom, too. But really, mostly my dad um, really influenced a lot of, you know, the, the 70s rock and country, uh, you know, music that I grew to love. And, uh, you know, they had a really well-rounded uh, collection of music that they introduced me to as a kid, so. Were they musicians? No, no, Just nobody fans? nobody in my family except for me is a musician. Where'd you get your love? I have no idea. I just, I started singing when I was really, really little. And I, the first piece of music that I ever got was a cassette tape of Sheryl Crow's All I Want to Do. Oh. So did that set the tone for your musical Completely, career? completely. It was the only song that I wanted to listen to, and I learned every single word, and I sang along to it, and that was just really the beginning of, of everything for me, and I was always singing along to the radio, always doing that, always performing for everybody, just, I was just a weird kid, but. And you went to performance <laughs> school. I did, yeah. Right? At like seventh grade, you started Yes, going? yeah, that's when I first started out. Um, well, actually, I, I did a lot of community theater um, up until that point. Um, oh. Oh, okay, so theater. where I lived, yeah. So theater was the beginning too. of it, yeah. Acting, dancing, singing, all of it, and I loved musicals. And I originally really thought that I was gonna go to New York and go and do Broadway. Really? And somewhere along the way, uh, between when I got accepted into the performing arts school for the musical theater department, and this is in Florida. This was in California. Oh, so you left your family in Florida? No. Did they so, so we moved. We I was born in Florida, and then we lived in Marietta, Georgia, until I was okay. five, and then we moved to California. Um, and it was, was that a coincidence or to help you pursue your career? It was just my dad got a job out okay. there, and I, I actually. So if we go all the way back, um, I so I was a big into music, big into singing. And so my mom started um, putting me into local community theater. And I got scouted by this agent after one of the shows when I was like six. And uh, my mom drove me up to this agency and I sang for them, performed for them, and they signed me that day. Really? And yeah, and so I, I, I got one commercial. Which one? It was for, I, I don't know if anybody remembers it, but it was for Hills Department Store, and it was with Brett Butler from the show Grace Under Fire. Oh, my gosh. Did yeah. you, like, feel like you had made it? It was a wild experience for me because I was so little. I was, like, seven, oh my you know? And so it was just such a crazy time, but I because I was traveling to – Los Angeles a lot so my mom would drive me it was it would take like two hours to get to Los Angeles and I would go on all these auditions and I was missing school and all that and so she decided to kind of pull me out of it and just let me focus on doing theater okay. and so I I did theater for about 10 years uh, where I lived and then I got into the performing arts school and then I just started to pick up the guitar and started playing that and I was really big so into poetry I was probably about 12 or 13 you picked up the guitar. at that time. Yeah. And then I, I had poetry and I decided to start putting the two together and started writing my own songs. And then I became friends with this dance teacher that I had. And he was like, you have such an amazing voice. And I have this friend who 
has a recording studio set up in his garage. So on the weekends and during the summer, I would go over there and we would write and I would record these garage studio demos. Yeah. And so then I had this other friend who um, her brothers went to high school with my brothers and she kept talking about all these trips that she would make to Nashville. And she was a singer songwriter too. And she and I became super close and she was like, well, why don't you come with me sometime? So I, I was about 16 at that time. And so I convinced my parents to let me go with her because she was 18. She was two years older than me. On your own? Just y'all too? We we came to Nashville and I met with her publisher and I ended up landing a publishing deal with him when I was 16. And so at that point I was like, okay, I got to leave the performing arts school and that whole idea behind. And I, I, I want to be in Nashville. I want to do this. Um, and so I convinced my parents to let me graduate a year early, finish up school through independent study. And I moved out here right away when I was uh, 17. So you were graduated from high school. Yeah. Okay. So I want to like back up a little bit because Getting a publishing deal is really difficult. Yeah. That basically means you are a great songwriter and that someone believes in your songwriting ability enough to sign you, invest money in you. Yeah. Because they think you're talented. Yeah. To get one of those at 16. And I had no idea. I had no idea. I was just like, cool, you know? Awesome. Right. And and I, I didn't realize it at the time that that was, you know, a pretty big deal. Had you written all these songs by yourself that you got the- Most of them, yeah. Wow, yeah, Rachel. and then he and then he started to put me with all of these different co-writers, and one of the first major co-writers that um, I I started working with this this was actually before he had even had a single hit was Josh Osborne, and we did a lot of work together. And he wrote some huge hits. Yes. Yes, he's amazing. And and so that was really the beginning of it for me. And so I, I really was on this path to to be a solo singer songwriter yeah. here in town. And then somewhere along the way, I ended up with the opportunity to join a band. And, and that, that band was Gloriana. That band was Gloriana. And that took Didn't me. did Mike and uh, Tom find you on my They did, yeah. Ha- Tell me how that happened. So I had a page with this music that I'd been writing and recording here in town. Back when MySpace was happening. Back when MySpace was happening. And um, I, I had my songs up there. And they were searching through all of these Nashville girl artists and I think that they typed in a few different because you could type in like influences and it would pull up the people that had written those specific influences and I think Sheryl Crow was actually one of them and so they found me and they listened to my songs and they really liked what they heard and they said hey we're gonna be new to town and we'd love to meet up with you sometime and you know write and whatever and so I I thought okay you know and we had a mutual friend uh, a guy named Chris Gardner who went to Vanderbilt and my brother knew him through Vanderbilt because my brother went there as well right 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 because I mean that's kind of scary they found you on MySpace (laughs) totally (laughs) totally creepy totally weird um but yeah so that's that's how that whole thing got started and then they moved in with you yeah, for a little while. Yeah, for for about six months How was that? in my apartment. It was crammed. <laughs> I was like, you guys have to find your own place. Um, but but it was good because I, I think for us at that time, we didn't really know each other that well. And so we got to work a lot. And then on top of that, we got to really know each other. And, you know, it was good practice for being on a bus together for what would be the next eight years. Wow. Yeah. So you kind of just, not accidentally, but like, you weren't seeking out a band. No. The band kind of just happened. It just happened, yeah. And so did you kind of just believe that was your destiny? Did it feel totally. right? Was it totally. Totally. chemistry musically? It was. It was. And I, and I think for me, too, the, the fact that I, I did that was so good for me because I was so green in so many ways and we we all got to learn so much together about about the business and just about ourselves and i i do truly believe that that was how it was supposed to be that was what was meant to be and you guys had quite a bit of success along the way you picked up a fourth yes cheyenne yes and she had her own like reality show on mtv for a minute yeah cheyenne yeah okay so how did y'all meet her and how did that come about 
Uh, Were you trying to be Fleetwood Mackie? Like- n- I, you know, that was definitely one of the influences. And I think, you know, wh- what happened with all of that was we'd been playing a lot at, um, you know, Third and Lindsley, back when it was the old Third and Lindsley. And, and I, I remember seeing her out in the crowd and she came up to us and we talked for a while afterwards. And then it just kind of naturally came together and and it made sense too because she had a lot of experience and she had a great fan base and you know she was very interested in all of it and so you know we we thought that it would be a great addition you know and it was when it was and so when that you know sort of fell apart and she left I think that it made us all stronger and we learned a lot from that experience as well and um you know we ended up having our our biggest song of our career after all of that that? Yeah. 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 Did so two? it did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That song is so, good. so I think, you know, everything happens for a reason. Everything works out the way that it's supposed to. And, and, you know, her, that was her journey with the band was supposed to end at that time. And How long was she with you guys? She was with us for about three and a half, almost four years. And Gloriana, the band was eight years eight, total. Yes. Okay. So while you guys were touring, you toured with Taylor Swift for two years. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what was that like? Amazing. Absolutely she amazing. Awesome? She's she's incredible and and I, I mean like I really truly believe that she has earned everything that she's gotten and and she deserves it and she she was such an amazing influence, you know, to see how how she is with her fans. How is she with her fans? Um incredible. Absolutely incredible and really just takes the time and never tires from it and um not only that but just an incredible songwriter she and really is. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you can't you can't argue with it, you I know? Think her vision is so clear yes. too. Yeah. She's so confident and she has yep. been for from such a young age. From the very beginning. Because y'all were with her kind of in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. We were with her on her first major headlining arena tour. And how did that come together? Um I guess that she had heard our first single wild at heart and i remember when that came out yeah such a fun song yeah and she really liked what she heard and she wanted us to be a part of the tour and she was so supportive and you know as far as when you're the opener for the opener on a tour like that you know the expectation is very low and should be very low as far as you know what you get and treatment and all of those things and she went so above and beyond and and really became a friend and um you know she took such good care of us Aww. and really supported our band and supported the song and, and you know you you couldn't ask for more did you guys have slumber parties uh we we did it, to some degree you know she she had her own bus with her mom um i actually ended up doing most of my slumber parties with kelly because she had her bus completely to herself kelly pickler was opening was the second mm-hmm yeah. Okay, and y'all became great friends. We became really good y'all friends, were like yeah. Besties. Yeah, yeah. I remember I follow you, I've always followed you guys on social media. Yeah. And y'all would like totally hang out, got yeah. matching tattoos. Yeah. It was fun because we we were together every day for so long, you know. Um, so I, I, I miss those days, you know, from time to time. But you know, we would run into her uh out on the road and we would end up on the same bill as her. And so it was like it, it's just one Kelly, of those friendships. Yeah, and Kelly. And yeah. It, it's just one of those friendships where, you know, we don't really see each other all the time we don't really talk all the time you know we do from time to time but when we do see each other it's like no time has passed you know it's just kind of one of those relationships she's such a great person yeah she is yeah I love that I've gotten to know her through her show which you need to come be on (laughs) she's so great yeah yeah right (laughs) okay so after Taylor Swift then you met Kelly Pickler. You guys, Gloriana won a lot of awards. Like you guys won that. What was it? The American Music Award yes. Breakthrough Artist in 2010. Yes. Okay, that's a big deal because that's all genres. Yeah. Right. It was a huge deal. It was really cool. That's insane. I'll tell you that I actually don't even have my my physical award. Somebody stole it from me. I still have no idea who. You stole it. I have no idea. Can you get another one? You need that. <laughs> Apparently, it's really hard to get to get your award back once something like that happens. Did if, it come in your house? Uh, it was never. It never reached my house. Like it was stolen in the mail. It was stolen off of our bus. <gasps> oh, <man. laughs> it was. Uh, yeah. It's. It's fine. <laughs> you know. That sucks. 
I have it in my heart. <laughs> right. But I mean, it'd be nice yeah. to have the hardware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was a wild night. But you know, I, I think in some ways it's sort of karmic because uh, right after we won the award. So when you, when you win an award like that, they give you a prop award you know, okay. so you don't have the actual oh, one typically. Yeah. Okay. Um, because they wait to get your name engraved in it, oh, they don't at least know. for those. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and so we had the prop award and they were like, you have to give the prop award back. You know, if, if you guys get this award, you have to give the prop back. I'm like, okay. And so right after we won it, I stuffed it in, in my purse and we took it and we went and like had a big huge like hotel party celebration this whole thing and you know passed it around and and whatever and and <laughs> so you kind of it was kind of my fault yeah and and we got in a lot of trouble we gave it back of course <laughs> um but yeah I, I guess maybe that was my my karma for for no, stealing the prop no. <laughs> I don't think so. yeah uh, I was 20. who were you guys nominated against um, I believe it was, I know it was Lady Gaga. You guys were up against Lady Gaga? Drake. Whoa. And it was somebody else. I can't remember. It was so long ago. It was about six or seven years ago. You guys were up against ago. Lady Gaga and Drake and crushed it. Yeah. Can you believe it? It was fan voted, you know, and so I, I think it goes without saying that country music fans are amazing and very dedicated, and we had some fans that would just sit on their computers all day and right. night and just vote, 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 you know? So yeah, it was so really great. you have great. a big fan base. Did Gloriana have a lot of fans that loved you guys? Totally, totally. Very dedicated, very supportive, very loving. And, you know, throughout this whole process of me no longer being with Gloriana just showed me um, an incredible amount of, of support and love because it, it was scary for me to A, make that decision and then to put that out there, you know, and not know what was going to come back. And so I, I was just overwhelmed with the outpouring of love and support and you know just super grateful for that okay so you have a statement which I thought was so well put and I want to read when you left Gloriana okay and right before you guys left though you guys had a monster hit which we talked about actually I want to talk about your statement but then I want to say you said trouble first you guys had kiss you goodnight yes which was a huge song for y'all went to number yeah. two I mean, that video I watched like a hundred times. You did? It was so good. That song Aww. spoke to me. I loved That's it so, so much. That's so sweet. It was a great song. It was a great song. I, I will say that. Did that change your career? Completely. Completely. And, and, you know, we had some songs that did pretty well prior to that. But when you have a hit song like that, you just feel a, a big energy shift and you just feel that love. And, um, you know, we, we were very blessed to just be on an incredible ride after, after that song did what it did. And then you guys put out Trouble. Yeah. Which you said was Revenge Diddy. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can we have details? You know, it's uh, when you're when you're just in your 20s and you're dating and you're kind of gathering all these different experiences. Um, you know, I think a lot of especially girls end up with the bad guy just ends up being a cheater and just not not a good dude, not who you think that they are. And, um, you know, I, I think it was just kind of a, a fun way of expressing myself <laughs> <laughs> do you think the guy knows it's about him oh yeah he totally knew it was about him yeah oh, he does. yeah oh, yeah gosh. yeah have you had some crazy exes completely yeah I've had some good ones too but okay. but yeah okay yeah the, especially when you're <laughs> a creative type do you date creative type guys I have found myself to be more drawn to that yes and with that comes potentially crazy totally but you know that's artists you exactly. know we're all sort of nuts so <laughs> because I think to have the creative side you also have to have the wild imagination yeah which if not tamed can lead to totally <laughs> totally crazy craziness <laughs> yeah exactly crazy exactly yeah <laughs> have you tamed your creative mind uh, I, I would say that I'm kind of somewhere in between, you know, because I, I definitely love to tap into all of those emotions and, you know, that's, that's where great songs come from is, you know, the stories and all of that. But I, as far as like who I am just on a personal level, I'm find myself to be 
pretty normal. <laughs> what does normal mean to you? Normal means like I'm a homebody and, you know, I have a great group of friends and I, I surround myself with people that I've known for a very long time as well. I'm very family oriented. Um, you know, that's, that comes first and foremost. And, um, you know, I love to cook and I love watching the bachelor and I'm actually pretty boring. We did. Yeah. Oh, on Emily Maynard's season, the bachelorette. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find out any dirt on how the shows run? No, not really. I mean, I think for the most part, uh, you know, when you see all those characters, those crazy characters. You kind of have to be a little batshit to go on The Bachelor. I think so. I would have done it because <laughs> of my early 20s, baby. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I mean. It's so funny, too, because it's like, it, it's such a train wreck a lot of the time. Oh and I just can't stop watching. And I just well, love like, it. How many girls fighting for attention of yeah. one dude? Yeah. How are you, how can all those people like the same guy? <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know how they all can, like, kiss the same person and then you know if I were the bachelorette and then like to have like to be like kissing like six or seven people all in the same night I would just feel so weird I'd be like yeah I need to go like brush my teeth in between <laughs> maybe that's just like my OCD but I don't know like just like, oh, oh yes yes right I mean OCD all around Your I'm a house is I'm a little psycho spotless. yeah like mop every day I okay so for Christmas <laughs> For Christmas, I, I told my dad, I was like, I want one thing and one thing only. And I want this cordless Dyson. I just got that. Oh, that's it's the best thing ever, right? It's the best thing ever. <laughs> I do it every day. Nothing gets me more excited than, than that vacuum. I mean, nothing. How psycho is that? It's unreal. Like, <laughs> I'm obsessed. And like, mine's hot pink, too. It's hot pink? Yeah. Like, it gives me that surge of, like, probably how you feel, like, on a oh, first yeah. date or oh, something, yeah. like, when you're yeah. cleaning. Yeah, yeah. And you see it, and you look around. I mean, your house looks good, girl. It, it is shiny, spick and span, smells amazing. It's always There's like not that. anything. I'm telling you, I'm, like, OCD psycho. How often do you vacuum? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you wake up first thing? Not first thing, but, you know, it, especially now that I've got that little Dyson. It's, it's amazing. It's a game changer. I'm so excited. I, love it I literally like. I it's could the best talk thing about, ever. I could talk about it, it is, and not yes. having the cord. Yeah, but like I said, I'm pretty normal. Hey, you know you like a clean house. I like that. So, what kind of cuisine do you like to cook? Oh gosh, I I like to do like a lot of different things. I like to do, um, you know, I I do a really good pecan chicken actually. <gasps> Yeah, that's like what everyone's favorite is, uh, I guess, of mine. But I do like a lot of crock pot stuff, too, because that's just easy. Um, a lot of Italian food, Mexican food, all kinds. What's your heritage? Um, I am mostly German. Okay. I'm a little bit, little, 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 tiny bit Native American. Nice. Um, Cherokee and Irish, English. You got a little smorgasbord. Yeah. A little right. bit of everything. A little bit of everything. <laughs> okay, so when you left Gloriana, which was, how long ago was that? Officially, uh, it was December 31st, of 2015. So soon. Mm -hmm. This is your statement, which I thought was so cool. I knew that this would be one of the biggest and bravest decisions of my life. I joined the band when I was just 18 years old, and I, full, and I fully dedicated eight years of my life to being a member of Gloriana. I had an unwavering commitment to the band, even though I had always dreamt of pursuing a solo career one day. I just finally reached a point where I really could no longer ignore what was in my heart. I felt as though I had completed my journey with Gloriana. I knew it was time to get out of my comfort zone and everything I've known for so long, push myself, and pursue a different creative path. <clears throat> so tell me about this new creative path and what Rachel Reinert's solo career looks like and how life has been post Gloriana. Yeah, so I'm still very much it's at, very fresh. yeah, it's still very fresh and I'm still very much at the beginning stages of everything. Um, you know, so I, I think for me creatively, I'm, I'm still sorting through all of that. Um, but I love the seventies influence. So I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to have a lot of that and a really organic feel. And then, you know, as far as the songwriting goes, I'm going to do my best to really, I just want so badly to have a hand in every song that goes into, into my First solo album so I want it to be really personal um, so that's really my priority at this point and um, you know I think I think since all of that came out 
um, you know, my life for the last eight years was go, go, go. And it's been a little bit slow for me and it's been a little bit of, okay, I gotta just be comfortable with taking my time and getting all of that together and getting it right. Um, you know, and, and as far as everything goes, it's gonna be uh, all new, people and experiences and, um, and a, a new team for me as well. And so I, I think it's just kind of getting it all together and taking my time with that and being okay with that and accepting that, you I know, totally here. Wait, pause one second. Sure. So like you said, being okay with that, cause it's so yeah. crazy to go from a hundred to yeah. like back at zero. But yeah. don't you think sometimes some of the most amazing growth happens in those times? It does. And I, that's, that's the mindset that I have to stay in, you know, because I think for me too, it's all this pressure that I've put on myself about, okay, you know, I'm sure people are expecting to hear something from me really, really soon. Um, you know, and I, I just have to let that go because I'd rather it be right than it, it be rushed you know, Ooh, so whether it be right. Than yeah. Rushed. Yeah. So, I love that. so it's, I, I just, I hope that everybody stays patient with me and allows me to kind of, you know, suss through this whole creative process and get everything together and, and get it right. Um, you know, <laughs> and then it, it'll, it'll come together when it's supposed to. So have you started the songwriting process? I have, I've already got a good handful of songs that really? I'm really excited about. Yeah. So you said 70s influence. Yeah. What does that sound like? Is that like like Stevie, Stevie Nicks? Nicks? Yeah. I was going to say yeah. that. Yeah. So you love that vibe. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. Do you have favorite songwriters that you like to write with? In town? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I I you know, I've I've been so lucky especially, you know, being with Gloriana. I got introduced to a lot of incredible people and um Ross Copperman, He's amazing. John Knight, um, Jimmy Robbins, uh, my friend, uh, the A list, the yeah, A -list. yeah, and then my 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 dear friend Alyssa Bonagura, who who we were just talking about, who you know, she's amazing. She's so cool and so sweet, and she and I um, became great friends because our boyfriends are in the same band. And what's that band? <laughs> they're called Tyler Bryant and the Shakedown, and they're an amazing they're rock amazing. band. They're so talented, and and so she and I hit it off right away, and we started working together and writing together and we have an amazing musical chemistry and people say that about her she she really is like she's she's like a freak she's so <laughs> good you know so it's it's uh it's awesome working with her you know so we I, I feel really lucky so do you have any idea what team you're gonna put together or is that just you're gonna let it happen organically I'm just gonna let it all happen organically I'm awesome. just really open. I'm, I'm open to all kinds of different things because, you know, right now at this point, like I don't I don't have a, a tour to be on. I don't really have like a schedule. Which um, is crazy because you've had one for eight for, years. Yeah, for so long since I was a teenager, you know. And so for the first time in my life, I'm just open to all kinds of different um, opportunities and possibilities. And, and I'm, I'm just allowing myself to kind of go on this journey. Has that taken a mental adjustment to wake up and be like, okay, I'm a a blank slate today totally I've been freaking out <laughs> <laughs> I've been a disaster you have what does your freaking out look like vacuuming like eight tears times a day? yeah <laughs> <laughs> while I'm crying yeah yeah <laughs> like where's my tour manager <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's been uh it's it's been good for me it's been it's been a humbling experience it's good to be humbled yeah what have you learned in this moment like you said humbling what has humbled you um you know just really having to be patient you you're know you're probably having to just really trust yourself and yeah. your instinct completely which sometimes that is terrifying completely yeah because you're just going on your own guiding yeah. light yeah exactly and you're trusting that it's exactly and it's not like I had like some master plan in place you know what I mean like okay the day that I'm out of this band now like here we go you know I I knew what I wanted to do but I knew that it would take time and that I just would be a total rebuild for me um you you're know willing to rebuild completely yeah so you're willing to do all the hard work for the solo career yeah girl that's amazing it's <laughs> hard work yeah and we were kind of talking before we started interviewing you believe in the universe mm -hmm. and like do you believe that things are drawn 
to you and like what you put out there. You totally, get totally. I'm so big into that. And like the, the funniest thing for me is, is just like the little stuff. If I'm riding on an airplane or if I'm in a public place, you see how like frustrated people get at other people. And, you know, even just if you're driving in your car and if, if somebody does something to upset you, I always like try to make a point to not get angry or honk the horn or flip somebody off or, you know, add any, any more negative energy into it. Because I think even just putting those little things out there, it all comes back to you. Um, you know, and it just perpetuates more, more of that, you know? And so it's, it's like every day, you know, if you wake up every day feeling like, Oh, I'm tired or you hit your, you know, toe getting out of bed and then the rest of your day just kind of spirals, Um, you know, so I try to make a point to every day, you know, wake up happy, be in a good headspace and think about what it is that I want to accomplish and, you know, just really take every day one day at a time, but, um, you know, just always generate more positivity because I think that that all comes back. I totally agree. You know, so that's conscious living. I can never say that word correctly. Conscious. Conscious. I, I don't know. I, I can't say it either. <laughs> How did you learn to live consciously? Because I feel like so many people let the day happen to them. Let yeah. life happen to them. Like you have to think about it to live consciously. Yeah. Well, I've had a lot of influence. A lot of it comes from my mom. And I think it comes from, you know, spending my formative years in California where a lot of people think like that. And, you know, I've, I've read a lot of books. I, I like, uh, uh, the secret, I love the secret and, uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. And, you know, he's an amazing writer and just, you know, all these different people who had that way of thinking. And I've adopted that into my life. And, um, you know, I think a lot of that also kind of helped me to make this decision and to be brave in that and to, you it know, teach you to trust yourself, trust myself and to follow my heart and, you know, to, to just believe which is terrifying. I mean, yeah. I feel like I try to live consciously also, but when you take these big risks, you really do have to have a faith in something. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I'm like taking a risk. And yeah. I'm trusting that it's going to work out. Yeah, totally. But well, however it works out, you know it's going to be fine because you're choosing to always see the positive. Exactly. I wish everyone did that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think the world would be happier? Yeah, I, I do. And, you know, I, I, I'm such a firm believer that everything works out as it should and everything, um, you know, happens for a reason. And, and you know, I, I, can, I can tell you so many things that have happened in my past that at the moment I may not have known, like, why is this happening? This is so horrible. But then, you know, somewhere further down the line, you look back and you go, oh, okay, there was a reason for that. That's, that's, that's why, because it brought me to this other place, you know, this other point in time, this other better thing, you know, so it's like trusting in God and, and all of that too, you know. Are you religious? Are you just spiritual? Or? I'm more, I, I would say that I'm a more spiritual person. Yeah. I was raised Catholic when I was a little kid. Um, Catholic. Yeah, yeah. I went to Catholic school and all oh, that. Girl. Yeah, but but I'm I'm a very I, I lean more spiritual than anything. So yeah. has your faith been a part of your musical career the whole time? I think so. Yeah. I, just I, your attitude. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think just you know really the, all that it comes down to for me is is you know being a good person and you know being good to other people and you know just really being loving and believing in love and and that's what it's really all about for me. So obviously you're amazing with your fashion. <laughs> like your outfit you have on right now is amazing. this necklace. Thank is you. Stupid. It's so pretty. Thank you. Where do you get your style influence? Um, I think that a lot of it probably comes from, I see, I'm just going to sound like I'm repeating myself, but I, I, I love like that 70s vibe, you know, so I like a lot of vintage things. I like a lot of, and a lot of stuff in my house is antique, um, you know, so I, I think it comes from that. And then also... Um, you know, I, I really like the, just the bohemian, you know, kind of style and you see a lot of it in magazines and, you know, on Instagram or, or whatever, you know, and so I, I take a lot from that as well. So Stevie's one of your style icons, mm-hmm. Stevie Nicks. Yeah. Who current day is one of your style icons? I really like Nicole Richie's style. I, I think she's got a lot of cool um, uh, you know, just choices. You she know? blends sophistication mm-hmm. with all the 
like the boho. Totally, and, totally. Which you do also. Thanks. Thank you. So what are you most excited about 2016 with this fresh slate? I think just for me, it's it's like you said, it's just a new start. It's a new beginning. It's a new adventure. It's a new chapter, you know, and and uh, it's it's just a, a completely different thing for me that I haven't experienced, you know, and it's challenging, but, but that's what I wanted. I wanted, I wanted to feel challenged again and I wanted to feel excited about something again and, and I wanted to push myself. And so I, I think it's just getting out of my comfort zone and really just embracing that and growing as a human being and as an artist. So that's, that's, that's really it. <laughs> that's all. You just want to grow. Yeah, you I just want to grow. Heavily grow. <laughs> Growing is exhausting. Yeah, it is. It's so yeah. rewarding, but yeah. it's so exhausting. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, you know, I'm I'm at a point in my life like where I feel like I can I can do that. You know, I I don't really have, um, you know, anything else to to worry about other than just being able to put everything into this and focus on that. So this is a season of Rachel. Like I think you are so. just gonna zero in on who you are emotionally, yeah. musically, spiritually, yeah. the whole package. This yeah. is your year. Well, that sounds so selfish. <laughs> in a good year. I get, yeah, a good yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think that's a good thing. Like, you have to take the time to really get to know who you are. Yeah. Not that you have exactly. these other experiences. But but helps. know who I am on my own. Exactly. You know? I kind of feel like that's the same for me. This is the yeah. first time I've ever been solo. Yeah. And it's great. To discover yourself totally as a total individual. Totally. And look at you. I mean, you're doing amazing. I'm interviewing Rachel Reiner. <laughs> oh my God. I, know. I don't mean that part. No, seriously. <laughs> you're a badass. You're a badass chick. Thank you. Thank you. And you're you. an inspiring woman. You're Thank empowering. You. You're kind. You're beautiful. You're talented. And you believe it's it's all going to work you're out so perfectly sweet. for you. You want to just move in? You can just like I'll hang just out. Move in. Pump me up every day. I'll bring my vacuum over. Vacuum and the more. dog. And the dog. <laughs> and Emmy Lou. Girl, I got you covered. Perfect. Okay, so do you have any like crazy stories you can share with me? A road story or a crazy fan or something bizarre? Crazy stories. Or just cool stories. That yeah. Don't really believe unless. Well, true? well, I mean, we, so I, I've been lucky enough that I got to, you know, perform at the White House. I think it what? was, yeah, I think it was back in 2010. What president? Uh, for Obama. See, I don't, I'm very political. Yeah, yeah, I'm right. Sure. <laughs> um, Obviously it was Obama. Yeah, so I, so I mean, that was an amazing experience. And then, Did you meet him? The, yeah, so we got to meet him. And then it was like all of these other artists. It was Stevie Wonder what? and John Legend. Oh and I have a crush on John Legend and Chrissy He's, Teigen. Aren't they so cute? They're, them as a couple. They're so great. They're the best. We actually, so we, this is a funny story. So we rode in the same limo as, as him over to the White House right before the performance. They're just chilling in the just limo? Just hanging out in the, in the limo with him. And uh, so his name on the list, because, you know, it's obviously very tight security, but his his name isn't really John Legend. Uh, I know, which all of us were like, what? Yeah. It's like, it's something really ordinary. I, I forget what it is. It's something like um, John Stevens or something like that. That's not it, but it's it's something very ordinary like that. And so he, he hands over his ID, but on the the list, I think it had him listed as, as John Legend. Oh. And so he hands over his ID and they're like, no, the, you know, this isn't the same. You, you, it's not the same last name. It was like this whole ordeal. Like, Dude, John Legend. And we were all sitting there just like, it's John Legend. <laughs> like, what? What? You know, we were all like freaking out. We're like, just Google him, you know? Right. It was pretty funny. I mean, they ended up letting him in. It was just like a mix up, but it was. was he cool? Oh, he was so cool. And she was, I mean, was she she's just stunning. Yeah. Chrissy was in the limo. Yeah, she too. wasn't in the limo at that point for some reason. I She met us over there, but she was very beautiful. Um, I, I didn't really talk to her. And this was actually before she really became, you Chrissy know, Deegan. yeah, hugely famous in the last few years, but really not so much then. Um, I, I guess she was like for modeling, but now she's like really, everyone oh, knows who she is. Worldwide. Yeah. But, um, yeah, everyone was just super sweet. Uh, Seal was there. Um, that's where we, we met Nick Jonas, uh, Jordan Sparks. Really? Yeah. All these people performing and it was, it was a really, really special night, you know, and that was really cool. That's one of the things about music is it takes you places that yeah. you could never really yeah. Up. Yeah. I never would have thought like, oh, I'm going to go to the White House and perform for a president, oh. you know, it never even crossed my mind. So it and was pretty cool. Play on the Bachelorette. Yeah. You do 
crazy stuff. Yeah. We, I, we got to do a lot of really amazing things. So I, I, I'm so grateful for that. Did you guys go overseas? We did. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff overseas. We um, went and did a whole uh, Middle East and Europe tour Those for yeah for Navy Entertainment, and we got to fly out onto these two aircraft carriers out in the Persian Gulf. And I mean, it was it was such a wild experience, and we scared? were uh, for sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, out in the Middle East. I mean, it was it was pretty intense, um, but you know, you go and you see what it was, it was hard. It was a really hard trip. It was about two weeks all together. And, you know, you see how these people, these men and women who are sacrificing everything for us, they work so hard and it's endless. And, you know, they, they just all do it with such a positive attitude and it really gives you such perspective, you know? And so, so we got to do that. We went to, um, Djibouti, Africa. We went to Sigonella, Italy. And then uh, with Taylor Swift, we went to Australia. So we, we got to go around the world. Yeah. It was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. Okay. So I like to end my interviews with a little thing called leave your light and basically just give me some inspiration that's either inspired you or that you live by or inspiring someone else. Ooh, okay. I got to think about this. Okay. I think, you know, as far as just for me, uh, you know, deciding to make this conscious, con- conscious, conscious, <laughs> I can't spell it or say it. <laughs> decision to, to do what I'm doing. Um, so much of uh, that had to revolve around having a vision and I think just know what you want to do you don't have to know the how you're going to do it and just focus on that end result and focus on you know what it is where where it is that you want to end up and, and what it is that you want to do and just really see that believe that and feel that so you see you visualize yes like you visualize the end yeah and then just work towards that. I do, yeah. So you think you need a clear picture? You have to. I you agree have with to that. feel it, you know? And feel it, it's already yours. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And live your life as it is, you know? And uh, honestly, a lot of that's a lot of what I have done, you know, and didn't even realize that I was doing it when I was younger, when I was a, a little girl, you know? And that's what led me to this point in time, you know? And so you I, always saw this. I always saw it, yeah entertaining singing yes writing and look at you now look at you girl well we'll see <laughs> oh, you got it. You got this. It's gonna be great. thank you thank well, you thank you rachel yeah, thank rachel you. reiner and everyone be looking for music from her coming soon but whenever it's right yes right exactly. not rush <laughs> one of these days it's gonna be awesome thank you okay bye girl <laughs>